So at this stage, I'm just going to take stock of where we are. Um, we have gone through framing the question for a systematic review. We have gone through literature search uh, for a systematic review. In the literature search, we have clarified that uh, we need to be reporting the search term combination, the list of excluded studies with reason for exclusion, uh, the flow diagram of inclusion of studies, and an assessment of the possibility of publication bias affecting our search. Then we have now covered an aspect of data extraction of the selected studies with respect to their quality. In this step of data extraction, the key thing is that the data are extracted by two people. And if the two people agree with each other, then we will be able to demonstrate by, an, by a statistical analysis called the Kappa statistic that the percentage agreement amongst people extracting data independently was high, increasing the confidence that the extracted data are uh, reliably extracted. And then for the, extra, for the selected studies, we can create a table of study characteristics and these study characteristics would relate to the participants, the types of uh, exposures or interventions and outcomes uh, with respect to the question we framed. And soon after looking at these, the quality of the studies would need to be uh, summarized and then presented. And I highlighted that the quality has been uh, already addressed inside your research question, because when we talked about study design as an element of uh, research question, we were already talking about what is the minimum level of quality we would accept to permit studies to enter our systematic review. And this is design related criteria for study selection applied in uh, the second step. And then for those studies that have met this minimum threshold, we carried out a detailed assessment of quality, um, which I showed you uh, in the form of a scoring system a moment ago. And using this uh, detailed assessment, we can present the information in form of a table or figure. And tomorrow we are going to look at how we can use the information concerning quality in various forms of uh, uh, meta-analytic techniques that we will deploy before we generate in inferences. And for construction of table, I showed you an example where it's possible to see how the various biases in selection performance measurement and attrition can be presented in a simple way and then summarized as a score, or they can be presented as a figure. So with this, I'm going to stop the presentation today uh, and I'll leave you to ask me any final questions and also uh, highlight anything you would like me to cover uh, in the session on Friday. So the, the stage is uh, now set for you to raise any questions about uh, question framing, study selection, and study quality assessment.
Can you please show the previous slide again? Absolutely. This is the slide concerning uh, concerning uh, of findings of uh, quality assessment. Uh, would you mind explaining again the uh, attrition bias? Uh, maybe my audio wasn't working before. No problem. And I don't really get what should we uh, look in this. Um... Okay, I'm going to take you through this one more time because this information I really skipped over during my talk. So thank you for bringing this up. You will remember that I presented this slide earlier in the calculation of effect size. And uh, I reminded you that in any study, there are patient or data losses. And in this example, I explained to you that we will assume that nobody is lost. And I also said, this is a hypothetical example. In real life studies, generally, there is an element of patient or data loss that is unavoidable despite all the efforts made by researchers. So these patients, or data lost in a study are what cause attrition bias. And attrition bias need to be dealt with by avoiding any data loss, number one. If that does not work out, which will be expected, then to report all the data lost as part of reporting of the flow of patients in your study. And finally, taking account of the lost patients in an analysis that uh, adjusts for the losses. So that type of analysis is called intention to treat analysis. Um, so just now, coming back to the issue you asked me to explain, what is attrition bias? Then attrition bias is something that would affect the calculation of effect size because either we do not know about whether patients have been lost or we know patients have been lost, but the, lost, the loss has not been adjusted for in the analysis presented. So this is what is attrition bias in a nutshell. Does that make sense? In enough, thank you. <laughs> okay, so th thank you for raising that. And uh, this gave me the opportunity to explain one more time what is uh, attrition bias. I'm very happy to explain anything unclear again or address any questions uh, or take any comments, please. Go ahead. Uh, I have a question. Um... Can you hear me? Sound your question in the chat. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes, thank you. Um, for example, uh, my the systematic review that I'm currently uh, writing uh, only includes preclinical studies, so in vitro studies. And I wanted to ask uh, if all those um, biases are also um, true for preclinical studies. Uh, because yes. I know that most preclinical studies um, do not even mention uh, randomization and blinding and so Well, on. look. <coughs> For each type of study, there is a different checklist for assessment of quality. So you need to identify a checklist 
that will help you capture the quality of the preclinical studies. So I show you here a website called Equator. And in the Equator website, you find checklists for reporting. So here you can see animal preclinical studies. Here is a checklist available for reporting of animal studies. And if your preclinical studies are animal studies, then you can take this checklist and take some items that you feel are relevant for your question and apply them um, in your review to undertake the detailed quality assessment of the studies. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So here is just one way of going about how to identify quality assessment items for your question. So thank you for bringing this up. It also gives me the opportunity to clarify that the quality assessment system I presented in my slides here typically is employed for evaluation of randomized control trials. If randomization is used in a preclinical study, in an animal study, for example, then an assessment of this kind could be considered for application in such a research question. On the other hand, if randomization is not a relevant issue for a preclinical study, then you will need to find other quality assessment items. These will not apply. Uh, 